variable radiation, temperature, and pressure conditions of the peach bottom plant. The facility, in addition to a fuel element chamber, includes a closed-loop helium circulating system, a fission product trapping system, and provision for sampling the helium flow. The development, construction, and testing covered a period of four years, and the elements have been subjected to more than 10,000 hours of reactor operation. Radiochemists sampled the circulating helium stream during tests using remotely controlled mechanical hands. The test proved out a number of important features of the system. The effectiveness of the fuel element in retaining fission products, the high fuel burnout, and the very long life of the graphite clad element. This is the reactor component test tower at General Atomic. A full-size prototype control rod and its drive mechanism, both designed and engineered at General Atomic, were thoroughly tested under the reactor pressure and temperature conditions of the peach bottom plant. They were subjected to nearly 600,000 starts and stops, far more than expected in the life of a power plant. The control rod that was removed for inspection after the test showed no changes other than minor wear. Following the test, the control rod drives for peach bottom, based on the prototype design, were fabricated and assembled. There are 36 hydraulic drives for control of the reactor. In this assembly step at General Atomic, a ball screw assembly is joined with the linear driving mechanism of a unit. Each unit was carefully inspected before the final assembly. Then the units were inserted into their pressure housing for shipment to the site. Within the peach bottom reactor pressure vessel, a remotely controlled machine is used to insert position, and remove fuel element in the reactor core. The fuel transfer mechanism also underwent an extensive testing program in the General Atomic Test Tower. The nine-ton machine with its 47-foot arm can reach any position in the reactor core. A one-sixth segment of the peach bottom plant's core was used to check out the machine's many operating parts. The operator remotely controls the machine from a console which, in the actual installation, is located outside the containment shell. As the grappler head lowers, an electronic sensing mechanism positions the grappler jaws directly over the element to be picked up. The machine will be used for both loading and unloading the peach bottom core. Construction of the peach bottom plant itself is moving rapidly toward its completion. In early spring of 1964, the first of the major nuclear components, the 135-ton steel pressure vessel, was lifted 120 feet for positioning in the containment shell. Control rod drive extensions were welded on the bottom of the vessel before it was installed in the heart of the containment shell. This is one of two steam drums for the plant. Each drum is nine feet in diameter. Here, one of two 30-foot-long steam generators is lowered into position in the containment shell. The generators each weigh 127,000 pounds and have carbon steel walls more than two inches thick. This is one of the hot valves for the concentric ducts that carry helium to and from the pressure vessel. One of the helium compressors is hoisted into position in the containment shell. And here is additional helium circulating equipment and part of the fission product trapping system. And the peach bottom control room takes shape. The fuel element grid plate, which fits within the 135-ton pressure vessel. These are the control rod drives as seen from the sub-pile room below the pressure vessel in the containment shell. Here the drives are being torque tested. As core loading began, large reflector sections were installed first. Then came hexagonally shaped reflector elements for the perimeter of the core. Then more than 800 dummy fuel elements were installed in the pressure vessel. The elements are the same size as the actual fuel element, 
and are arranged in the same pattern as the peach bottom cord. The tips with metallic rings are control rods. This core is for the initial non-nuclear checkout test. Upon completion of this core loading, the upper plenum shroud was installed, and then the pressure vessel head was set in place and the vessel sealed. Loading of the actual nuclear fuel elements follows these tests. But this is only the beginning. General Atomic Engineers and Scientists have designed and are developing larger HTGR plants ranging from 200,000 to 1 million kilowatts, incorporating many advanced design features such as spherical pressure vessels and new simplified components. Continuing fuel cycle development programs point to still lower fuel costs through higher conversion ratios, longer fuel lifetimes, and higher fuel burnout. These programs include work on new triplex-coated particles and graphite fuel elements of advanced design. In very large sizes, these plants have the potential of thermal breeding to produce more fuel than is consumed. The HTGR has opened the way to truly economic nuclear power, competitive with conventional fossil fuel power plants in many parts of the world.